Hi everyone, I've got another piece of hardware to unbox today, and as you can see from the title up there, this is a very obscure console. I haven't seen any reviews for this, I really don't know what people's perception of this, if anyone else has really bought them and you know, given their opinions. In fact, I think I might be the first one to review this device. And uh, like I said, it's very obscure, I'm really excited about it because ever since I first saw it, you'll understand why I'm so giddy about it. I was just really blown away by its design. So I've been waiting so patiently for this to come in and now I'm really happy to see it. Now the weird thing is that usually these obscure consoles, they come from China and this one it seems that it did, but when I ordered it, it came from Singapore. So I don't know what's going on over there, why they didn't just ship it from China. But um, as you can see, the console itself was really cheap. It was only like 16 bucks but the shipping was just as expensive and uh, I thought that they were gouging me for it since the shipping actually was a little bit more than the actual console but um, according to the customs declaration that is the true cost of the shipping for this and um, either way let's go ahead and open it right now because I've been waiting so long to go ahead and open this and I think there was an opening somewhere in the package and you know what the tape I don't know why <laughs> maybe maybe this is useful or not but it says 100 fun and then something you know in uh, uh, I don't know what language that is but I wonder if that's maybe a store or something I don't know what 100 fun means but here we go there's this little opening which maybe this will help us crack this open ah excellent let's see remember kids I always cut away from you I always cut away yeah, this is how we'll open it. Oh, that was insane. Okay. Oh, handheld game player. That's your first indication right there. And that's a PSP right there, which that is not what I ordered, so I hope that they got the order right. Let's see. Oh, shoot, I'm just tearing this thing up. Uh, I'm lost, I'm lost. Ah, let's cut down here. Try not to damage the box, because again, this is a really obscure device, so I want to try to preserve it. Ah, come on. Yeah, I think we're just going to have to do that. There we go. There we go. Okay, I hope they sent me the right thing. Huh. Yeah, because I'm seeing PSP stuff all over, so I'm hoping I didn't mix up the order. It, first of all, let's go ahead and look at this packaging. Hopefully it's the right thing. But, wow, it has some very strange design. There's a CG character right there. But then a live action model. So that is strange. Yeah, it looks like it's the same thing, just repeated. Oh, I think this is it, and I think it is the right thing. Oh, uh, there's some other things right here in the box. Sorry guys, I gotta keep the anticipation high for you. It's high for me, so if I had to wait, you guys will have to wait for a little while too. Here is the power adapter, I guess, just USB. And you know what? Someone is chewing at the cardboard. Who is this culprit? It's Mackie. Don't mind your own business, Mackie, please. All right. USB cable right here to mini USB. Uh, cheap headphones, Ugh, very cheap. Tons of styrofoam, wow. Again, it keeps on having this PSP little device right here, which that is not what I ordered. So that makes me really frightened. And then some quality control stamp. All right, let's look at the device. Oh, here's the moment of truth. Knife, please. Oh, here it is. Ah, oh, the Jaibo Wang S200. 
This thing looks amazing. The reason I wanted it so badly is because this looks pretty much like what you would imagine a Game Boy would look like if they kept the whole Game Boy look up to today. It has buttons which are very PSP-like and it's very small. I didn't expect it to be this small. But wow, this thing is just incredible. And uh, it didn't have this writing on it when I was looking it up to buy it. Um, that's where it has a start and power and also an escape button instead of start and select. Uh, the directional pad is actually just an analog nub, so that's interesting. But again, this is modern. This is high-tech stuff here. And then again, the buttons are basic PlayStation format right there. Uh, let's see, it has a hold button, so I'm guessing that it's got an MP3 player in it too. USB, TV out, headphones, uh, 4 gigs inside, and then a bunch of writing that I just don't know what that is. A microphone, huh, and then plus and minus right here, but there's no button unless... Yeah, I can't push that in, so... God, I hope they didn't leave something out, and then a reset switch right there. Uh, micro SD card. Yeah, this looks cool. Wow. This right here on the back is a speaker, but it seems like it might have been designed initially to be a digital camera. I say that just because of the way that it's placed, and also a lot of the MP4 players over in China have digital cameras on them, and uh, that goes for game consoles as well. And uh, I don't really understand that. I mean, of course, a lot of those devices over here don't have digital cameras. And I think that's mostly because here in the United States, if you want to take a picture, everyone has a cell phone. So you could just do it that way. That makes me think that maybe on these devices, they come with those because either cameras aren't as, um, phones with cameras aren't as prevalent, or maybe it's just that kids who play on these aren't allowed to have phones, so therefore they take pictures with these. I don't know, but either way, I'm glad that they did not include a digital camera because they're usually useless and they're like 1.3 megapixels, so it's just useless to have it either way. But let's see if it'll turn on. Ooh, it did. I was afraid they would be dead in the package, but let's see. And tons of stuff that I don't get. Oh my god, what is this? Uh, <laughs> okay. Is there a way to turn down the volume? Because, oh my god, that was loud. No? Like I said, there's no button there. So, I mean, how am I supposed to do that? Uh, the screen kind of goes out. That's weird. No, 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 don't do any music. No, no, no. Okay, ugh. Chinese devices, they always, always have copyrighted music on there. Uh, there's Contra, Super, what looks like Super Mario, Power Rangers, it looks like, yeah, Popeye, Defender with a Lego, <laughs> with a Lego logo, what the heck, uh, Wacky, Stay, oh my god, that's so slow, Wacky Stack something, okay, uh, Naughty something, Frogger, okay, let's see. Oh, huh. Okay, classic game. Let's see what's on. Please wait. Oh, okay. Here's all those that were up there. Huh. <laughs> There's My Little Pony on there, too. Weird. When I bought this online, they had a list of uh, the games that would be on here. And it was really weird because they had some Pokemon tiles, which I, I'm not too familiar with the Pokemon series, but I could definitely tell those were Pokemon games that never existed, at least not here. And uh, let's at least try Contra. Let's see what that does. Wait, why did it do that? Um, back. Go back. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess I press restart and that gives it to me. There is no way to turn down the volume on this. Uh, am I allowed to control this? Oh, there we go. Got to press start. There's also some tape up here, but I'll try to take that off later. Control. 
control actually isn't very good. At least for me, it's a little bit hard to control it right now. Ah! It's just hard to aim the gun. I don't really know why. Maybe I'm just bad. It's a little bit hard to see it too because I have it pretty far away from my face. Alright, it's Contra. Let's try to get back. Um, quit. Please wait. Alright, I'm already in the 400s and I'm not seeing anything that's Pokemon related, so... I don't know if it's even in here, and I've seen some of the tiles repeat. So something's telling me that they um, are basically duplicating some of their games, just so it looks like if they have, you know, a thousand games there or whatever. And when I got this, I did not buy it. Um, it was not advertised as, you know, one of those 9,999 games in one. And uh, that's one of the things that a lot of uh, Chinese consoles will do, so that, that way they'll... Um, Prehistoric Man, wow, that looks cool. Uh, so that way it'll seem like they have tons of games on there, but really they have like 300 different versions of Contra. And um, either way, this one, uh, it was only advertised as having like less than 100 games, but again, it's just really strange that I'm not seeing those Pokemon games. And I'm not a big fan of Pokemon, but I know that a lot of my fans are, so that's why I'm looking for that. Um, I'll probably have to check out later, then I'll tell you guys if I find them. Anyway, so you could see why I wanted to get this so badly. It's because, uh, of course, I'm a big fan of the Game Boy. And uh, I'm not such a big fan of the Game Boy Advance. I just never really was into it when it was uh, still new, when it was still alive. But uh, one of the things, though, is that Nintendo, when they went with the Game Boy Advance, they went with like a horizontal, uh, like a landscape uh, type of design for their console. Whereas the Game Boy, the Game Boy Pocket, Game Boy Color, it was always uh, vertical. Uh, in a portrait mode. So I kind of like this because it's like a return to that original Game Boy style. And that's why I was like, you know, this is almost like if they continued with that classic uh, design for the Game Boy. I mean, it doesn't have any shoulder buttons or anything. And um, I think it looks great. And uh, really the only time that they went back to that type of vertical style was uh, with the Game Boy Advance SP. Let me go ahead and update you guys in a couple days and I'll let you know what, what I think. Alright guys, I've been playing with this device for a few weeks now, and we've got a lot to talk about. So let's start with the big elephant in the room, the name itself. I think it's pronounced Shiobawang, and it just rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? But uh, the name itself, I'm not sure if that is its actual true name, because you know that logo with the boxing gloves? I think that's the actual brand of this device. And between the time that I opened this unit and now, there was a news story which came out and uh, it showed that brand, I recognized it. I remember even reading that story and I was like, hey, that's the actual brand of the S200. And it turns out this brand is called Little Tyrant. And I don't know if that is what Chaiobawang translates into, but anyways, back to this device. All right, now back when I unboxed this, I thought that the buttons felt okay. And they still do. They have a decent feel to them and I never noticed that they were sticking or you know, not registering or anything like that. The problem is though, that when you're designing a handheld, it really is an art form to get the controls right so that they have the right feel for the user. And they didn't get that right with this one because you see, the buttons are a little bit stiff. They take a little bit of force to push down. It's not like they're difficult. Again, they don't stick or anything like that, but it does take a little bit more of a press than say, you know, an original Game Boy or something. That's a problem with this unit though, because when you're pressing buttons, you can already tell that the screen shakes quite a bit because it's such a small device and it's so light. In fact, this thing is so lightweight that I'm not even kidding you, a deck of cards, it weighs more than this. That's how lightweight this thing is. Now, just other little minor headaches with the controls. The analog nub, it's a little bit, well, it's a little wonky. Sometimes uh, the movement doesn't really register. And also I just realized that if you put in the up, upper right hand diagonal um, position like that, a lot of times it'll stick. And then, therefore that is a control that sticks, and then it gets stuck in that position, and then of course you're kind of screwed. But, um, and then also you'll see that the buttons themselves, the designs on them are a little bit off. Just a little. But I don't know, I'm not going to fault it for that. Whatever. It doesn't make a difference anyways. 
Um, otherwise, the controls are okay. They're pretty decent. And next, the build quality is pretty bad. Because, I mean, watch this. You have the line that separates the top half from the bottom half of the unit right here. And it's together, together, together. Big gap. Right here on this side, there's this huge gap that goes down the middle. Even when I try to push it together, the gap doesn't go away. And you'll also notice that the mini USB part right here, it's a little bit crooked, but I think that's my fault because I did have to open the unit. But it is still just a really bad part of the build quality where everything is together and seamless, and then right here there's a big crack. And you know what, to the right of the mini USB, that's where you could really tell. Let me try to get you in here. You see there's a big crack that happens right there, and then it smooths out and everything's clear. But anyways, yeah, so build quality is a problem. Again, the lack of a bezel is a really huge issue. I, I've seen other Chinese devices do this. I don't know why they do it. Maybe it's just a cost-saving measure, but it absolutely cripples the device right there because without this, there's already been a few scratches that I've gotten on the screen right here, and this is just with light use. I've been careful with this thing. And also, I've already got dead pixels right out of the box, especially right here with the with the tape in the corner. There's a few dead pixels. And also, I think there's a couple right here in the opposite corner. Lastly, before I turn the unit back on, I wanted to show you that the manual that came with it has nothing to do with the S200 at all. This is for a completely different device. As you could tell from the cover right here, that's definitely not the S200. But the screens themselves, they look similar, but it is definitely a different device. You'll see that the screens, they don't match what's on the unit itself at all. And most notably, you could play videos with this thing but it does not have a camera. So I don't know why they start talking about a camera right here. There is no camera on the S200, of course. There's a little speaker where it seems like one should be, but there's no camera on this thing. Anyways, that's just the beginning of this thing's problems. So let's take a look. All right, now as I showed you earlier, this thing is incredibly loud, and there doesn't seem to be any volume control here. It has this little plus and minus right here, which I figured okay that might be volume control but there's no button for it and uh, plus and minus that could be a lot of different things so anyways when I looked in the device I saw that there is an option to turn the volume on or off but that's it it's just to either mute the device or turn the volume up which of course only has one setting apparently and that's just to blow your eardrums out but because of that little part on the back I was wondering are there actual buttons on here so I took a gamble and I did take apart the device and uh, just to let you know, it's only held together with four screws right here on the backhand side. So at least it's easy to take apart if you could count that as a benefit. But anyways, when I took it apart, I found out that it does in fact have micro switches for the volume under there. I have never seen a device where they put the micro switch on the PCB board but forgot to put the button on the case. And that really confirms something that I believed all along. I think that this device was very rushed. I don't think that it really had a prototype. I think this is the prototype basically. They just designed it on a computer, put it into production, and let's start selling them. Now sometimes for whatever reason when you start the device it will default to the Chinese language and of course that is a total pain in the ass so you have to go into the settings and then find out which one is actually for language and you see right there I already got it wrong. Ah here we go. Okay here's English. But either way so it's just a big hassle and I don't know why it does that it seems to be completely random. Sometimes I'll just turn on the device and boom Chinese language. Another thing it's got terrible frame skip and lag on these games and that's terrible because this thing pretty much is a GBA emulator. It doesn't really do much else. So when even the simplest games have frame skip and, and lag issues, then that just shows that the actual OS itself is just junk. And, oh my god. You see, look, it, it's even hard to control your character because, because of that. I don't even know why I'm playing. Something about Defender, but I, I actually don't know what it is. And the sound quality is just terrible. That's probably because it just has one speaker. But either way, you can tell that it's very off. Also, while I was making this video right now, the sound just completely went out on the games. And watch. You could totally tell that I didn't mute the device because you can hear it, you see? 
when I go to the options and I'm selecting stuff, you could hear it. But when you go to the game itself, there's no sound. I don't know why, but the sound just went out. One of the biggest problems I had is that I couldn't find the select button. Because of course you have start here and then you have escape. Now escape brings us to the menu and we could go into the keyboard mapping as they call it. And of course up is up, down is down, and when you go to the actual keys themselves, come on, go down. Alright, you see it's like Game Boy Advance, how you know, you have uh, B and A up here, then also L and R. Those are where we're mapped to the face buttons right here. But it's also confusing that, well it's frustrating that it keeps going to sleep, but it's confusing because uh, when it's mapping out the keys right here, it has uh, A, B, X, Y, which is sort of like Super Nintendo, but then on the keys themselves, they're PlayStation design. They're, you know, symbols. So that, of course, is confusing, but if you've ever played Super Nintendo, then you shouldn't have a problem there. But the strangest part is that it does show select on here, but it has select mapped to R. What R? There is no R on this device. There's no shoulder buttons. There is no R button, I guarantee you. So that just shows me that there is no select on this thing. So if you have a game that requires the select button, then you're screwed. There is no way that you can push select on this device. This thing will also emulate Famicom and NES, and it does it very well. But really, is that a compliment? I mean, anything can really play NES now. So I don't see why that's even anything to put in its favor. But either way, it does do it without any lag or anything, so that's a good plus. However, the analog nub is still a pain to use on this thing. It's just something that I can't get used to, and it really hurts the controls. As for the game list, I've been through it, and all it does is repeat. I think there's only about maybe 100 games that it has that are different, and then it just repeats all the way up to 2,000. So this thing does not have 2,000 games on it that are different. It just has a list of 2,000 games, and a lot of them repeat. It also doesn't have those Pokemon games that it advertises having. It doesn't have Pokemon Red Roses or Pokemon Color Blue Demon G. The music is really interesting as well because all the artists seem to be Chinese. And that's really different from the other devices like this I've seen where they usually have copyrighted music. Again, I was really afraid that they was going to start playing it. and uh, But a lot of the music gets copyrighted. It's like, you know, Lady Gaga or whatever is, uh, you know, current at the time that it's made. But over here it's all in Chinese and that makes me really think that this device was created just for the domestic Chinese market. I should also mention now that the device is no longer available where I got it, and that makes it really strange to own this device because I think I might be one of the only people in North America who has this device, and that's a really strange feeling. It can also show you photos and videos, and some of these like for instance Astro Boy is actually just a part of the actual Astro Boy movie, and so it's not even a trailer for it, it's just a part of that movie. And I don't feel comfortable showing any of that, so I'm just not going to, but... ah. Look, look, look. Look at this. It restarted all on its own. Or I don't know, maybe it's giving me the white screen of death. What happened? Uh... Guys, yeah, seriously, I did not script this. It... Look. It's still selecting stuff, but... The screen, it's not doing anything. Oh my god, I think it broke right in front of my eyes. Uh, okay, escape isn't helping us. Let me try shutting it down and then I'll power it back on. I did not expect that. I was actually going to make a point of it to tell you that this device, it does randomly shut down. And that's that was going to be, you know, the pinnacle of this review, that one of the biggest problems of this is that this thing will just shut down randomly. And of course, that's a problem on an emulation device when, oh, I don't know, you're using state, save states, and so when a device just shuts down randomly, that is a huge problem and it's probably very frustrating when you're trying to make a lot of progress in a game and then boom, it's out like a light. Let's see. Cross your fingers, let's see if it... Ah! That's very promising. And now let's hear its crazy ass little slogan. Come on. Come on. Uh, are you there? Still stuck on that. Okay, this is worrying me. I think the device broke up. <laughs> and look, now it's back at the higher audio preset. Ah, and look at this, Chinese. I told you that happens, you see? Just totally randomly. Last time, I mean, 
I had it in English. You saw that. And now look, it's all in Chinese. This is great, because now I get to show you the system's actual faults and show you I didn't make it up. But anyways, so then you have to go back, reset the damn thing. There we go. Now it's in English. You see, it... <laughs> I think this thing has actually trained me to read Chinese because <laughs> now I could totally tell that, you know, the fifth option it's language and then that's how I turn it back into English. Wow, I can't believe that that actually happened. Here is one really creepy and very curious thing that I found here. There is a little option that says camera and of course, like I said, this thing doesn't have a camera but it has a video loaded on there. Check this out. You guys can all write your own creepypasta on this, okay? I don't know who made that. I don't know what it's supposed to be, but it's a little 10 second video. And I'm thinking it might be the guy who created this damn thing. Either way, it makes no sense. And I don't know, it showed like a plant, a cell phone, and... Who knows what the hell else it was, but either way, that was just very interesting because it seems like it was made with like a cheap Chinese digital camera, but of course this thing doesn't have a camera. Maybe an early prototype of this did have a camera, who knows? But um, otherwise, it's also just as likely that they just used the firmware from a different device and it just happened to have that video on there. All right, now of course what drew me to this device is that it looks like a natural progression from the original Game Boy. And in fact, this is why I hope the original Game Boy will evolve into. And I especially like the four face buttons because I really thought that's how the Game Boy Advance should have been. And I actually do kind of hold it against it that it doesn't have four face buttons like a Super Nintendo. But anyways, I was snooping around and it turns out that in March of 2009 at a game developers conference, Nintendo showed off a device which was the predecessor to the Game Boy Advance and it looks eerily similar to this device. However, it is very different, because apparently it was much, much bigger. This... oh, okay, goodbye. <laughs> Anyways, it was much, much bigger than this device, and it did have force face buttons, though. Apparently, the reason why they didn't put it into production is because, of course, it was kind of big and clunky, so they just didn't want to deal with that. And also, it had some problems with the software. So, either way, Nintendo almost went this route. But uh, maybe the guy who was making this, again, the story came out in 2009, Maybe he was inspired and that's why we have this device. So maybe this is the device that never was from Nintendo. All right, so in conclusion, I've gotta say this device is terrible. It is just absolute garbage. And I don't feel ripped off though because it was only 35 bucks. And for that price, it was really nice to get a little curio to add to the collection. But at the same time, I'm a little bit saddened because I have never wanted a device to do so well and fail so miserably once I actually get it. It might actually be the worst handheld I have ever owned. But it's just sad because they had so many good things to start out with. The idea is brilliant. The pocket size of this thing, it actually looks like a pocket version of the Game Boy Pocket. I love the form factor on this. But I'm not willing to give up on this because there are a few other devices I know of that have this like micro form factor. And I'm willing to give them a shot because I think this is a brilliant design. But, I don't know, I'm not going to get my hopes up this time, but maybe I could compare them and then see if one of them does live up to my hopes. But, we'll have to see. Maybe I'll make a video about that, maybe I'll order another one, maybe I'll just decide that this is a lost cause. Who knows? But, either way, just to give you a little teaser about what's going to come up in our next video, um, it is actually going to be really, really exciting. I'm very excited about it because it's going to be another book review and yes I know that some of you might be getting tired of this uh, in all honesty I never expected my channel to be reviewing books and that sort of thing because video games and books they don't really get along hand in hand but this one though I have not opened it as you can see it's still still in its box but this one is worth waiting for this is actually going to be a really cool book I think I'll see you guys next time and I think that this is going to turn into a really good episode